using a generic scan tool. In this instance, it's the Think OBD100, available on Amazon. This is the tool itself. I'm about to pass the phone over to my partner, who's going to help me capture this video for you guys on how to use this tool. Obviously, I'm doing a little scrunchy thingy. You're going to plug this into your OBD2 port. Whenever you do, this thing should come alive. OBD2 ports vary by car, but in the mo in general, they're over here on the left or under. Oh, it's got a cap. Remove the cap. As you can see, the tool is turning on. Okay, now I assume this is not a touchscreen because it's not. This is a literally it's $14. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit diagnosis. Okay, it's doing all the different protocols because they've had different protocols over the years. It just said okay. You see right there? So it's talking to the can. Okay. <clears throat> now as you can see, the very first thing it does, it says how many codes there are. It says there's five codes. Pan over to the check engine light. Check engine light is on. This is why this is a great example. Okay. So anyway, check engine lights on. This is also Toyota, which also turns on the other lights. So don't worry about those. Now we see where it says readiness okay seven, and it says readiness incomplete zero. That is what you want. That means the car has done all of its self-testing, okay? And then data stream count 52. That's the number of PIDs that we can look at in the data stream, okay? So what I want to look at is I want to look at the codes. So I hit up arrow. I'm going to hit read codes, okay? Now, on this car, it's going to be a bunch of EVAP codes because there's a uh, technical bulletin out on this vehicle and it's whatever. So anyway... Evaporative emission system leak, orifice flow low, that's part of the EVAP system. Evaporative emission system leak, another different code. Orifice high flow, all these are evaporative codes. Okay, so now I want to go back because I want to show you the other things that you can look at here, okay? The IM readiness and data stream. I'm going to start with IM readiness. This will tell you, this is what they use for state inspections. On some states, they all have to be complete. On some states, one can be unrun. Okay. So anyway, since DTC is cleared is what you want. Okay. You see where it says ready, ready, ready. So it's miss. That's misfire fuel. That's your fuel injection system. CCM. That's comprehensive component monitors. CAT. This is the important one. CAT. That's your catalytic converter. That one is one they test. EVAP is one they test. That's where we have all the codes. O2 ready. That's the O2 sensors are ready. And the O2 sensor heaters are ready. This car does not have EGR, so it's not listed. Okay. So I'm going to go back. I'm go back again. And now I want to see data stream. Okay. So the list is generating. Remember, it has 52 PIDs. Now, if you're using this you want to record every one of these the CL means it's enclosed okay this is a B engine so it has two banks bank one and bank two engine coolant temperature sensor of course this is in Celsius I'll have to go into setup to change that but right here short and long-term fuel trims this is the most important part of figuring out whether or not your fuel injection is working right all these numbers should be under 10% as you can see they're all under 10% so there's nothing wrong with the fuel injection on in this car. Okay, RPM is obvious. RPM is something you'll use if the vehicle won't start. I might tell you to use that. Okay, so anyway, you're going to go down through all of these numbers and record every one of them. And or do a video just like this, which is the easiest way, and upload it to YouTube. And then that way there's a record 
because you know someone can pause the video on any one of these screens to see where they're at okay and so anyway you can see there's a lot of data there keep in mind this is a generic tool okay so now we're going to go down to onboard monitor okay this one is very cool so we're going to hit that okay and then what it's going to do is it's going to tell us pass or fail for all of these different monitors okay so we go down okay so let's say that we're chasing a mess okay this is actually organized this for you which is really nice and if there's any miss on cylinder four it's going to show up as numbers see where it says misfire count last and there's nothing there that means there's no misfires and it says one or two so there's something else to look at oh let's hit that how cool is that okay so that's the actual the dollar sign zero c that's the computer speak part and you know a lot of times that's what you'd have to go look through see where it says zero count zero count so every one of these monitors will correspond to whatever we're going to look at purge flow o2 sensors misfire catalyst okay so that's it on this list this will vary by car not all cars will have this list it depends kind of on the year model and type of car but those are the three systems that we're going to look at okay so and it also has you know if you don't have google for whatever you can look up a dtc and then you can put in the number whatever the dtc is i'm going to go ahead and put in p0420 which is catalyst efficiency low takes some getting used to. Ah. Okay, I got to start over. P, zero. Four, two, zero. Okay. Okay, catalyst efficiency below threshold bank one. Just exactly what I told you. Okay. So watch this entire video. This is how to use this tool. Get all this information for whoever's trying to help you, and they're going to help you get to a better diagnosis. Thanks for watching this video. Okay, that's a little bit of an addendum. Okay, so we're okay. So I forgot to talk about freeze frame. So I forced my check engine light on. So we're going to go down to, oops, okay, that's where I need to be. So freeze frame, okay. Okay, see, I disconnected the purge valve, so that should have something to do with that. And I did it right after I started the truck. <laughs> so that's why it says open loop. And, oh man, my long term fuel trim is higher than I expected. On both banks. That has something to do with I have catch cans on this truck, which is a whole different video. But that has everything to do with that. You can see an engine coolant temperature sensor zero mile an hour since I unplugged it sitting still uh, RPM that's probably about right so uh, intake air temp of course you can ignore that 99.2 percent and runtime four second that tells you everything you need to know fuel rail pressure that's a nice little data pad there 217 Oh, that's how long ago I last cleared the codes. Which actually, I think that's how long ago I had the battery disconnected. <laughs> so, almost 9,000 miles. So, anyway, that's freeze frame. And we want to do the same thing as before and record this. 
uh, Lambda is another way of doing fuel trim. I'm surprised they list it that way. Oh, man, they got a lot of debt in here. I gotta admit, for $14, I like this tool. Okay, that is your accelerator position sensor. That's your gas pedal. All right, that's, okay, there we go, 37 to 40. Takes a little bit of getting used to. This is a very decent tool for generic. Okay, let's go back. Let's go to, don't even bother with O2 sensor test. I've never seen that work. You can ask for an EVAP test. That's the, that one there, almost never works. I'm not going to go vehicle information because it'll show my van and I like my privacy. Uh, I am nest ready. They should all be complete. Since, same as before. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. Okay. This one has EGR. <laughs> it's funny because it doesn't have an EGR valve, but still okay. So does have uh, dual variable valve timing meaning intake and exhaust camshaft so I guess in a way it does have EGR so this drive cycle you'll use this to see if it's run any during this drive okay and since it was two miles ago see how it says incomplete incomplete 